Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Uh, I had these TI-82s uh, for years in my math class, and I just got a set of the TI-84 CE+. Plus. So I'm going to go over opening them up, uh, how they're going to work in my class, and maybe just a quick overview of these new Laminated overnight on a CNC cut. One class I've always taught has been pre-calc trig. That's really one of my favorite subjects. And starting this year, we've become an IB school. So now I'm teaching um, IB math, SL, and we're splitting into two different courses. So for that IB math class, we have the new TI-84 plus CEs. Let's open these up. Let's just see. Booklet still. Oh, this is cool. So they just have a 10 pack in there. I got three 10 packs. There's a calculator. Ooh, very nice. Oh, so the last one that I had for a class set is a TI-82. I don't know, that might be like 15, maybe more than 15 years old. Uh, these are a lot nicer, a lot smaller. I like the yellow. I like this piece right here, school property embossed on the front there. Really thin, those are initial impressions. I really like the fa fact that it doesn't have a safety cover over the top. Here's a charging station. Oh, this might be, oh, this is beautiful. Put the screen there. I did see them on Amazon, um, so I'll put a link on Amazon in my description to these calculators. I, I do know my oldest son just started college this year, uh, and you really have an unfair advantage on the SAT with the TI-84 CE. And part of that unfair advantage is a, a lot of testing strategies that you could check your work with these graphing calculators. I say that, that you have a really unfair advantage with one of these TI graphing calculators, but you only have that advantage if you know how to use them. So I'm actually really looking forward, come back to me, I'm really looking forward to having my students learn how to use these uh, and start doing well in class. So let me keep opening these up. So it just has, because it's a classroom set, I have a single charging cord for 10 calculators. Let's go plug them in. Okay, here are two of the banks. Uh, so there's 20 calculators, 10 calculator to the bank. So one 10 outlet on the side there. You can see they're all charging. Um, let me get to my desk cam and just go over initial impressions and comparing this to my original TI-82. So again, these are on Amazon. I'd highly recommend a TI. Um, I would also recommend a calculator in high school so that you get to know it really well. Um, so when you get to college, you don't have to start all over again and try and figure it out. Not only will they be big advantages in high school math and science classes, but they'll give you big advantages on standardized tests. I think I'm gonna keep these charging stations inside of a closet or a cabinet. And then what I'm gonna do is when every kid checks one out, I'll just have them put a three by five card with their name in the slot when they take a calculator. Or if they wanna borrow one, they'll just put a three by five card in that slot to let me know who has it. You know, I've been teaching math and shop for years and when I took over the wood shop, there were tons of safety, not safety, but I guess special practices in place so that tools never got stolen. And I started phasing those out, and now I really don't have any of those systems in place at all, and I've never lost a tool. As long as the students know that this is your house and your tools, I've never had a problem with that. So I can't imagine I'm ever gonna have a problem with these things going missing. I'd imagine 
by accident, kids will forget to return them, but I'll have that name to ask them. Okay, here's my new TI-84 Plus CE. I just got a classroom set of these. I'm really excited I had with these TI-82s. You could still buy these on eBay for next to nothing, um, but when you see the advantages of the TI-84 Plus CE, I would probably just wait uh, until you can afford one of these calculators. So just out the gate as a teacher, a couple of things that I don't like about the TI-82s. Well, the worst thing about them is uh, the fact that they have batteries and not a charging station. It's, it's easy to find grant funds to buy a classroom set of calculators, but near impossible to find funds to buy batteries. So I almost always had to buy batteries myself in my own pocket. The TI-84 just drop into those charging stations. So just that alone, I already love I actually don't like these protective cases. Um, I know they seem pretty inherently clear how you're supposed to put them on. Um, but kids would always jam these things on their backwards and break them and leave them. Not with intention, just without knowing. Uh, the screen, let's turn on these two different screens, are really a big difference in the screens and their capacities. You may not even be able to see this green screen here. So here's just an operation, seven times seven. And you can't even see that, it equals 49. The way you turn up the contrast on the 82 is second arrow up. Now oh, you can see it there pretty well. And then over here, seven times seven. So you has that work line down. We're graphing right now, uh, both in algebra two and in trigonometry. So let's try a graph. Y equals one sine of theta. Let's try five X. Oops. Y equals five X. Think it graph. And we probably have to go to the zoom window first. Probably have to set the window. Yeah, so this is set for degrees. So x min, we'll put that at I don't know, negative 5. Oops. There's my window. x min, negative 5 to 5. Scales 1. y min, negative 5 to 5. And a scale of 1. And there's my graph, y equals 5. The trace feature is cool, so you can find actual points on here. So you can find coordinates on there. Like, let me go over a few other features here um, that are kind of interesting. So to turn it on, lower left here. Um, and then the blue function right here is an inverse function. So the inverse of on is off. So if you want to turn it off, it's second on. Um, so, you know, the inverse, a square root is square or square. So the inverse key will always be the blue function. Inverse of cosine is inverse cosine. The other thing that's good to know, too, is that the quit button right there is above mode. So let me go over some of the settings here. So here's mode. I don't know if you can read that. You're going to just use the arrow key. There's radians. I scroll over to degrees. I hit enter. Degrees is now selected. I'm done with that, so I quit that operation. We go back to mode. So here, you can run different parametric functions, polar, sequentials. You could set fractions, uh, statistical diagnostics. If that's turned on, that'll actually give you an R value when you're running your regressions. So let me quit that. Uh, the next thing I want to point out to you, which I'm not sure everybody knows, is that a subtraction key is different than a negative key. So when you really have negative values, you want to use a negative key versus the operation of subtraction. Don't get those two things mixed up. And the other issue that I see a lot of mistakes done on these calculators is a calculator will always follow order of operations of PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, 
multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So if you have the problem 22 plus 10 divided by 2, right? So if you're unsure, you should always use parentheses. But you're going to enter this as 22 plus 10 divided by 2. And you'll see that that is not going to give you 32 divided by 2. It's going to give you 22 plus 10 divided by 2 or 5. So if I go 22 plus 10 divided by 2, it's going to give me 27. So if you want to do this right here, 22 plus 10 divided by 2, you need to enter it like that. So you got to go open parenthesis, 22 plus 10, close parenthesis, the whole quantity divided by 2, and that'll give you the 32 divided by 2 or 16. So the calculator do what you tell it to do, but it's always going to follow PEMDAS. Those are some of the larger mistakes I see on calculators. Sometimes really complicated problem and you miss points just because you did your um, operations on the calculator incorrectly. So I highly encourage you to use those parentheses. Well, I'll keep you posted. The big differences right now, I would say, are the overall size, the new TI-84, its rechargeability, um, the no cover on it, the screen, but as you look at the two different controls and buttons on here, they're not that different. Um, so if you, you know, if you got pretty good in the old style TI, transferring to a newer TI uh, won't be hard at all. So I'll do a lot of different um, things on here. So far, we've done a lot of stats on the TI before, regressions on the TI, and a lot of graphing. So both Algebra 2, pre-calc trigonometry graphing. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit uh, like and subscribe. This is Colfax Math. If you want to get one of these calculators, I'll put it in my Amazon store and you could get it through the link below. I would highly recommend a graphing calculator that you're really comfortable with for any standardized test. And the only way you get comfortable with it is if you use it in your math class all the time. What will really set you back is coming into class and borrowing different calculators and you're trying to take a test. Well, how do I find radians? you got to ask all these questions. Um, you don't really show up on the football field without your cleats. You really shouldn't show up in math class without your own calculator knowing how to use it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that unboxing of the new TI-84+, Plus, getting started with it, comparing it to the original TI-82s that I had.